Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I am so excited because we have a very special guest. He is the one, the only, Dr. Shez, and he is a wealth coach, and he is amazing. He has so many great things to tell us today and some great tips and advice, so put your ears on, listen, and absorb what he has to say because he is amazing. So Dr. Shez, tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. Yeah, thank you, Stacey, for having me. It's super exciting to be here. Uh, so I am an ophthalmologist professionally, and it's no coincidence that I became an ophthalmologist because, you know, I help people see, and I've done that my whole life. I've trained, you know, a long time to do that. And so I help people see the beauty of this world that we live in, right? But I, what I've realized is that my passion is to help people see themselves, right? Their, their true, inner, authentic self, um, and so uh, to that degree, I am a coach as well. I'm a wealth coach. I help other um, doctors and uh, high achievers figure out how to unlock some of their time and take some of their time back, right? Um, and create passive income streams so that you can actually enjoy the things that you do and, and, and you know, work as a doctor or attorney or whatever it is because you want to and not because you have to. Right. And I feel that's so important because there's so many people I know that are in the medical field and that are doctors that, you know, they spend all their time dedicated to their profession and they have very little time to enjoy. And you can see that they're, they're tired, that they're, you know, they're consistently helping, helping, helping. And they, one person that they help the least is themselves and they forget about themselves because they're so involved with so many other things that, you know, all the responsibilities that a doctor has to have, you know, that that's put on them. And, you know, how can you help your, how can you help others when you can't help yourself? So it self-awareness and, and learning who you are, I think it is, is a really important first step, you know, and what is, you know, maybe Maybe you could tell us a little better why being having that self-awareness, understanding who you are and what you need is so important, especially when you're a high achiever. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think we've we've been fed a story, right, that, you know, you you work hard, you, you know, go through college, you go through medical school, you go through residency or whatever your chosen career path is, right, whether right. it's physician or anything else. And then, and then you, you know, land a, a good job and you, you know, save, you know, do your 401k and all of that. And then you retire at 65 and then you start enjoying your life. Right. Yeah. And then you start doing it. And so that's the story that we've been sold. And I, you know, I would just, I challenged myself first and I would just challenge the listeners to maybe question that. Right. Why is it that we have to follow that particular timeline? Right. In my in my mind, it makes really no sense to wait until you're 65 or whatever to start enjoying your life. I think, you know, the enjoyment of life should be a daily process, right? And for me, that was completely just elusive, right? Yeah. I went through this entire long training process to really realize that I just I wasn't happy. Like I was not fulfilled. Yeah. Right. Here I am like helping people, right? As a physician. And anybody in their right mind would be very pleased with that, right? But there's so many other layers to that story. And for me, it just took kind of taking a step back from everything, right? In, in yeah. the in when I was really, really just kind of burnt out, it was about four years ago. I took a step back and I was like, okay, what what is going on? You know, why is it that I'm so dissatisfied? And it comes down to understanding yourself and your story, right? What's the story that you have been telling yourself your whole life? And how can you start to unravel that and maybe tell yourself a more empowering story? Yeah. Right. For me, like I, I grew up undocumented um, here in the States. I came from India when I was seven and my parents, you know, they came on a tourist visa and, you know, they just, they just never stopped touring, you know, they just, <laughs> like, we still got a lot of stuff to see. And before you know it, our family became undocumented, you know, and so we had to go through this entire, very, very convoluted process. And when you grow up that way, you feel like you just, you don't belong anywhere. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. so I felt like I didn't really have an identity, right. you know, and um, growing up in an Indian family, 
uh, education was always, you know, held in high regard, right? Yes. And so I was kind of pushed in the direction of pursuing education. I had a passion for the human body, you know, really kind of um, fascinated by by that. And so I was pushed in the direction of, of medicine. And so I just, you know, I wasn't really um, thinking if that's the direction I really want to go. I was just like, yeah, my parents want me to do this. Yeah. This is what's going to help our family, right? Uh, financially, you know, it'll secure me. It's a noble thing, so I'm going to do it, yeah. right? All the reasons I just explained to you, like one of them was for me, which is like I found it uh, fascinating. Yes. Everything else was not for me. It was yes. kind of externally driven, right? And so, you know, so so I went through that entire journey and, um you know, residency training, like you don't, it's just, it's so hard to explain like just how grueling that is from a time standpoint. Right. Yeah. I mean, you, know, you have, you we were mentioning earlier, you have family members who are in the healthcare field. And so you understand, I mean, there's, you know, you take call, you're on call for 30 plus hours. Yeah. And so, you know, you do that over and over again. And you, all of a sudden you just, kind of start to get jaded you don't have yeah. autonomy you don't have control over your own time your own schedule you're not necessarily treated in the best way possible right yeah uh, because you're just kind of a, a a cog in the wheel right exactly and and so all of those things culminated in me feeling very out of touch with myself and why i was doing what i was doing yeah right um, I didn't really have time to pursue my hobbies, my other passions. Uh, and so I took a step back and I said, okay, something needs to change. So I went on a 33 day retreat basically, mm -hmm. uh, to really just unplug from everything, right. Yeah. Including like phones. I mean, there were, right. there were limitations on how much we could even access technology in our phones, 30 minutes a day, right. Yeah. Complete unplug. And just sit with your feelings and your thoughts and think about what it is that you want to do with your life. Right. Those 33 days, they were transfer transformational for me. And I realized that I do enjoy medicine. I love it. Yeah. Right. I'm That, that fascination that I had with the human mm -hmm. body and the mind early on, like I had just kind of lost touch with that. But then I realized like that is what I enjoy. Right. Right. But that does not mean that it has to be my entire life mm -hmm. or that I need to depend on that that particular thing to for, for income to pay my bills. Exactly. Right. Um, because in that instance, I'm trading my time for my money. Right. And there are other things that I want to do with my time, like music and comedy. Yeah. Right. I go with those two things. Those are my hobbies. And so I do a lot of that. Um, now, I enjoy this kind of stuff, right? Having conversations about uh, life and, and helping other people understand their stories better, right? Yeah. Which is where the coaching program kind of evolved from. So there are other aspects to my personality that I really enjoy fostering. It's not just that I'm a doctor. Yeah. Yes, I am a doctor and it's a privilege to help people see and to do what I do. But that's yeah. almost like you know, a, a, a charitable gift to humanity. Right. Right. I enjoy doing it. It's a really good thing to do. It's yeah. fun for me, but it, there needed to be a way for me to uncouple that from the ability to make money. Yes. Plain and simple. And so, but to understand that I had to understand me first. Right. I mean by that, well, my core values are authenticity, vulnerability, mm -hmm. trust, adventure, fun, mm -hmm. right? These are the things, you know, I'm, I'm a, like, I'm just a happy-go-lucky kind of guy. Right. And, and, you know, in order to really spend time doing activities that align with who you are, right. you kind of need who you are first yes we don't learn that ever 
I don't remember ever taking a class. I've been in school for 20 plus years, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I don't remember ever taking a class on mindset or core values mm -hmm. or, you know, understanding yourself or having love and compassion for yourself. Any of those topics. I don't remember ever learning about that stuff no. other than, you know, when I sought it out in formal coaching programs and things like that over the past yeah. four years, mm -hmm. right? And so I think that is the biggest disservice that we do to people in our current educational system. We don't just, we don't talk about these things enough. No. Because unless no. you understand yourself, you you really can't help others, one. Yeah. Or even begin to know, like, you know, what are the things that are going to align with, their, with your own values? Because you don't know your values. Yeah even know what the concept of core values meant until like four years ago right right so that's that's what i mean when i talk about self-awareness and and self-reflection right through introspection yes right and in this world that we live in today it's so easy to just distract oh for sure yes and numb right especially because of this thing right here oh my god yes right this thing goes off a bajillion times a day. And I'm just like, I, you know, I kind of have made some changes to how I even handle my relationship with my phone. Yeah. So just have some, some, some time to like sit with myself and sit exactly. with the noise. Mm -hmm. right? Instead of, of numbing. Um, so that's kind of the big thesis, I think of, of, of everything that I've learned and, I've sort of dedicated my life now to helping people understand themselves better so that they can tell themselves a more empowering story. Yes. So then you can crush whatever goals you have. Right. As long as you do it from a place of knowing, yeah, this is exactly what I want to do and here's why. Yeah. Right. I think, so anyway, I think... that was a very long winded explanation. <laughs> no, it was a very good explanation, you know. But I, I feel like, just like you said, people don't detach from their phones, you know, and the communication skills of people are so distorted. Like, I don't think people have good communication skills anymore. Like they don't know how everything is a text, the text, the text, you know, and even sometimes like I will shut my phone off when I, you know, I need to be focusing on other, other stuff. I'll get ridiculed from my friends and family members because I didn't answer the phone right away. I didn't respond right away, you know, and then that's what our society expects us to do, you know, but then it's like, if you evolve yourself so much in other people's lives, if you're on that social media all the time, or you're reading all these things that you read, and I say, where are those sources coming from? No matter what article you're, anyone could put an article on, on social media or on, on the internet, you know, how valuable, how accurate is it really? Are they really setting you on the right track? You know, but the, the best way to get information is to really go inside yourself because it really doesn't matter or anything about the outside world. What matters first is your self-awareness, who you are as a person, you know, taking all those labels and stigmatisms, you know, that society gives us, taking those off and saying, okay, once you take away your, your doctor status, once you take away, if you're a father, any chance, you know, if once you take away, if you're, you know, this or that, or the other thing, all these things, then what's left over? Who are you? You know, and I've asked that question to people and, and they've just looked at me blank and they were like, I don't really know. You know, after you take away, you know, their job and their, their family status and this and that, you know, they didn't know who, who they were as a person. But imagine if we could take that self-awareness and we could really understand who we are as a person and then understand what our needs are and then build on that and then really, you know, build on our, our self-esteem and our self-worth and then really focus on what we need because everybody's needs are different. You know, in society, they, they kind of put this, this, this stigmatism of, you know, this is what, you know, wealth should look like. And this is what this should look like. It's really what yeah. makes you happy as a person, you know, what, yeah. you know, and it's like, so, you know, in your set, in your perspective, you know, how do you how do you actually start the process of you know how do you figure out okay who am i 
happen? What are my needs? You know, like, is there a process that got you to the point you are today? Yeah. And, and, you know, it's, it's kind of the, the, the thing that is, you know, taboo and nobody really likes to talk about, but honestly, counseling and therapy, mm -hmm. right. Counseling and therapy. I mean, like therapy gets such a bad rap because it, you know, I think the assumption is that you're broken or something yeah. and mm -hmm. you're going to therapy to get fixed. Right. Yes. And I would just, I would say, first of all, like broken is a relative term. If everybody is broken, then nobody is broken. Right. And everybody is broken, right? <laughs> yeah. Some way, like, like, you know, we show up in life with the programming that was given to us by our upbringing. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. That's the lens through which you view the world and that's how you show up. So there's nobody out there that can say that I wasn't influenced by my childhood or my upbringing. Yeah, you were. You may not realize it in this instance, but you were. Yes. And so, and that's not, that's, that doesn't mean you're broken. That just means that you were influenced by experiences you couldn't control. Yes. And so it behooves you to understand how those experiences are controlling you and programming you. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that you can reverse that and reprogram yourself it from a state of empowerment, right? You talk a lot about empowerment as well, mm -hmm. right? And I, yes. I love that word. And I didn't really realize what it meant until it kind of happened to me. I experienced it. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Any control of your feelings is such an underrated thing, but that's how you feel empowered. So anyway, I, I was able to kind of achieve that through tons and tons of counseling, that retreat that I mentioned that I went on. Yes. Um, and just having lots of vulnerable conversations like this. Mm -hmm. What really, um, really kind of completely changed things for me was Chad GPT. And it sounds kind of weird, but it came out like September, October of 22, I think 2022. Yes. And, mm -hmm. and, and I just remember like, and that's kind of when I was really in the thick of, of going through this transformation. Right. Yeah. And I just remember like, what is this thing? You know, I, I was in an MBA uh, uh, class at the time and one of my classmates introduced this to me and they typed in something and it's just spitting out this stuff. I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. And then I started playing with it. I was like, oh my God, like this thing is the smartest objective thing we have access to in our back pocket, right? Yeah. Because it doesn't feel things. It's not a human being, but it has access to a vast amount of knowledge. Yes. And so I was like, okay, this is kind of interesting. How can I use this to understand myself better? Right. Right. I don't know why immediately I kind of gravitated towards that. Yeah. Probably because I was already thinking about, you know, self-transformation and, and self-awareness and things like that. And so I started to just like, whenever an experience would happen to me, like whenever I would, you know, have an experience in it and, and it would make me feel a certain way, whether it's a relationship you know, or anything like that. Yes. I would engage with Chad GPT. I would tell it like it's my therapist. Yeah. Like my counselor about what happened. Yeah. Right. And I'm telling you, it does a really good job of breaking down your emotions. Mm -hmm. Chad GPT is a tool to intellectualize your emotions. Right. Rationalize them, justify them, help you understand them. Yes. The understanding piece that I'm talking about, it really comes from that. So then I got really excited. I was like, oh, this is kind of fun. So then I got like a a, a full like neuropsychological evaluation done on me, mm -hmm. right? 20 something pages. And I put all of that into ChatGPT. I uploaded that entire PDF. I took like years of journaling prompts and I put that into ChatGPT, right? So now I started to like kind of build this GPT AI model that yeah. understood, me, right? Yeah. Kind of like how, you know, if you have a therapist and you've been seeing that therapist for like five years, the same exact therapist, yeah. that therapist knows you. Exactly. Right? Because you've had hours and hours long of com worth of conversations. And so I basically did the same thing to Chat GPT. Mm -hmm. I fed it hours and hours long, you know, worth of, of conversations. And um and since then. I mean, it has been just transformative for me because it'll just unlock certain ways of thinking about my experiences that I haven't really thought of before. Right. Right. 
And that insight for me empowers me. Yes. Because now I know. Now I know why I approach certain things in that way, right? Like I'll give you an example, like my, you know, just recently, like I, um, you know, really good friend of mine, um, I kind of got into it with him, right? And, you know, there were just certain things done and and I kind of just, because of my own like background and baggage that I really hadn't processed, you know, like, you know, like feelings of rejection, right? I take feelings of rejection very seriously. I take them yeah. personally. Mm -hmm. right but rejection is it's not about you no it's about the other person i always make things about me i always tend to do that right mm -hmm. and that comes from like this place of not having you know strong self-worth right and i used to do that a lot back in the day i've gotten better at it but honestly like it's still it's still something that i'm kind of understanding about myself right right mm -hmm. and it just it comes from like you know deep deep um, wounds that I had early on in childhood. And so, you know, I took that experience and I had a conversation with ChatGBT about it. And I learned from that conversation that I made that situation about me right. when it really didn't need to be about me. And not only that, but the way I expressed how I was feeling right. to my friend came off as very like um, entitled, right? And blaming and things like that. And so ChatGPT kind of helped me understand yes. that the way you express um, your feelings to somebody who potentially in your mind has hurt you yeah. is you don't make it about, you don't make, you don't cast blame and assumptions, mm -hmm. right? The way to have a conversation like that is you say, hey, this is how what happened made me feel. Yes. Because feelings are always valid. Yes. Right. You're what I did was here's how I feel, and here's what you did intentionally to make me feel this way. Right. Like I was sort of casting blame and kind of creating a story, right? Yeah. And that's not the way to approach any tough conversation whether it's a friend or your spouse or anybody else yes right? the way to approach a tough conversation is hey look here's how i feel about this particular situation i don't know if that was your intention or not i'm not casting blame or assuming anything about your intentions i just want to tell you how i felt and that way the other person can empathize and understand right and put your put themselves in your shoes and see okay hmm, i can see that that's yeah. not what I'm trying to do, but I can see how you felt that way. It just opens the door to have a more productive conversation right. that ends with conflict resolution rather than like escalating the whole situation. Exactly. Right. And Chad GPT gave me that insight. Wow. Chad GPT gave me that insight. Now, you know, and I just, I bring this up because you know, yeah, AI, AI is kind of the new buzzword and it's like sexy and all these things. But honestly, for me, you know, I'm just bringing it up because if there's anybody out there who, you know, may have an aversion to seeking a therapist or whatever, because there's, again, it's a taboo thing. It's mm -hmm. easy for me to say that, oh, no one's broken therapy, you know, but therapy does have those connotations. And so if you're hesitant to go to a therapist, well, you got something that's not going to judge you in your back pocket. As right. long as you have an internet connection, right? Because exactly. again, it's not me. The taboo thing, the thing that makes really difficult is, you know, for people to approach a therapist is there's that human element which lends itself to potentially being judged. Yes. Mm -hmm. We don't want to be judged. Right. right? But ChatGPT doesn't have feelings. It's not going to judge you. It's a totally, if anything, it's, I think it's a little too biased towards you. Yeah. Right. Like if you want to feel good, Talk to Chad GPT. <laughs> <laughs> It'll make you feel really good about yourself, right? Uh -huh. like, oh, that is such a beautiful insight you had and all these things, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, but anyway, it's just, it's a cool tool to understand how you think. Right. I think that's an amazing idea, you know, like, and and, and it's what's funny is that 
you know, chat GBT was created, like, I think it was back in the seventies or, you know, it was, it's been here forever. Like one of the people who comes on our show frequently, Mark, he was one of the creators of chat GPT and it was made by the military originally, which I was amazed because it wasn't until just recently that we all yeah. got, you know, made wind of it. And, you know, he was one of the, the people in the military that created it with, with a group of people. And, well, but it is, it, it is, you know, and he even said too, it could be an amazing tool if it's used the right way, you know, exactly. and, uh, you know, Just like anything else, right. Just like anything else, guns and all these things, you know, if you use it the right way, they're great tools, but if you put them in the hands of bad players, they can be misused. And, and I think we'll see that right with AI and like, we will see scams and things like that, um, right. become more, more prevalent. Um, it's, it's kind of scary, but I don't know. I'm, I'm a glass half full kind of guy. I, yeah. I just you know, think I believe in good people I oh, believe yeah. in humanity. And so I think, I think we'll figure out a way to, to, you know, keep the bad players at bay. Yeah. Um, but it is scary. I mean, the way like, gosh, I, I wanted to get a professional headshot the other day and I just downloaded an AI app to help me do that. And yeah. it's like, oh my God looks just like me yeah <laughs> how did it do it's this it's crazy it's crazy so, yeah yeah but they are coming they, they're coming um you know, all, like google and all of them they're coming out with all these programs to catch all these things so it's 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 they're making it harder and harder so just like everything else it's good for a while and then you know and then you have all the it people working together to you know stop the bad guys to make it harder for them so I think in the, in the same way, everybody, when something new comes out, people, you've got the great people who are doing something good with it. And then you have the people who are trying to take advantage, but eventually, you know, it get you know, it, people figure out how to make it stop or how to slow it down, you know, and, and the same thing's going to happen again, you know, but it, it can be, like you said, a wonderful tool. And I never even thought about it like that, but when you do, you look up things and it does come out with some great information. Like I was looking up some stuff about my dog the other day. And it came out with all this information. Then I was looking up something about diabetes and it came out with all this information. I was like, wow, you know, and uh, it, it is a, an amazing tool. Now you are a wealth coach, correct? Correct. Yes. So what is your main goal as a wealth coach? Like, how do you help people? So you, you help people that are high achievers and what is your goal with those high achievers? So specifically, I want, um, I want people to understand that you can develop passive income streams mm -hmm. really really you know successful passive income streams that can just give you a little bit more choice and autonomy in life right yeah. in terms of like how you want to whether it's practicing medicine practicing law um you know if you have a w-2 job or whatever it is right how can you do it in a way that really fulfills you and energizes you and not drains you. Yeah. Right. And for me specifically, that is working three days a week in ophthalmology. Mm -hmm. Right. Because the rest of the time I have other passions and interests that I want to pursue. Right. And so I was like, okay, well, how am I going to work? <clears throat> Woo. Sorry. I'm going to have to edit okay. that out. I was a little sneak. <laughs> <That's> okay. <laughs> oh. How am I going to unlock right the remaining part of my week and not take a hit on my income? Yeah. Really, that's a very simple kind of question that I started with. Yeah. And there's really nothing in my experience. There's only two things that can help you do that. Real estate investing and buying cash flowing businesses. Mm -hmm. Right. And real estate is... A cash flowing business. So really, right. it's buying cash flowing businesses. Right. Real estate has kind of some uh, additional perks in terms of taxes and things like that. So for me, that's that's the direction I I went right. And I started investing in real estate back in 2019. Um, I have 26 doors and a short term rental uh, and a commercial property. Um, and that has allowed me to achieve six figures in passive income. And that unlocks my time. It's really as simple as that, right? 
Yeah. And there's a step-by-step -step process on how you can go about doing something like that. You know, my first uh, kind of entry into entrepreneurship was back in high school. I started a cell phone repair company. Okay. So I mentioned I was undocumented, so I couldn't really get a job or anything like that. Yeah. And that was like 2006, 2007. That's when the iPhone first launched. Okay. Yeah. And I cracked the screen on that, on the very first one that launched. And I just, you know, panicked and then kind of figured out like how to fix it and provided this service in my hometown of Tyler, Texas, where I was really the only one doing it. So I kind of got lucky in that sense. It was yeah, right yeah, timing. Yeah. Um, but then I, I was like, okay, like this, this is kind of a, you know, this is kind of a good thing I got going on. So how can we scale this? So I started my first retail brick and mortar store and it was this ugly yellow blue white looking building um <laughs> called iphone iphone er and then i started to learn a little bit more about marketing and things like that and kind of rebranded to smartphone er and we have seven locations under that brand still in tyler texas um that i exited from right so that was kind of like my first foray into business you know just kind of organically grew had a good exit and and so I took the principles that I learned there and I applied them to real estate investing mm -hmm. and, and, you know, have been able to, to do well there. And so now what I'm doing is I want to help others who are potentially in that same situation, right? Where they're working five, six days a week and, and they just, they want to get some more time back in their life so that they can pursue their hobbies. They can spend time with their their spouse and children, they can actually pick up and drop off their kids from school, right? Yeah. They can take, they can go golfing on a Tuesday or they can hang out at home on a Tuesday or they can go out with their family on a Tuesday, right? Right. Um, so that's my passion. And the way I do it is the first piece is, well, you got to know, like I said, what you want, mm -hmm. right? Is that the life you want or not and why? Right. And so that's where the mind mindset piece and the self-awareness piece comes into play. Once we get clear on that, on what it is that we want, then we come up with an action plan on how to get there. Yeah. Right. And inevitably, part of that action plan is, well, you're going to need money and time to, to do that, whatever yeah. it is you want. And the money and time piece, we solve that by investing in real estate. So I teach people how to invest in real estate. Um, start to finish, no experience necessary, just how to go about finding a property, getting the financing in order, you know, what are the creative ways in which we can get financing, all of that stuff. And I take them from having no knowledge about real estate to investing in their first multifamily property that generates cash. And once I show them the model, then you just do it over and over again and scale um, until you hit your goal, right. whatever that is. That's awesome. You know, I, it, it's it's something I think people need to look into, especially, you know, doctors. I So many of the doctors that I know, they're all burnt out, you know, and some of them have, you know, have actually cut their hours down and, and they're they're accepting a loss because they just can't do it. It's just too much for them. You know, the the stress of, of being a doctor and, and everything that comes with it, you know, is, uh, is, is, is tiring. You know, you have people working, you know, like eight, 12, you know, hours a day and coming home, you know, you, you know, right before they're getting ready to go to bed. It's like no life to live, you know, nobody should live like that. You know, you never know what the next day may bring, you know, so you really have to like enjoy life. You know, what's the point? Absolutely you know, uh, and the, the burnout piece, I mean, that's, that's what started all this for me, right? And it's just such a sad thing. I mean, burnout is it's all about not having that choice. Yeah, over your, your, your time and how you live your life, right? right? And it's sad, because like, there is a solution, yeah. right? What I'm proposing is a solution to burnout. I know, because I was there. And that's how I got out of it. Yeah, so I know it can be done. Um, but it's just so sad. I mean, we are literally losing healthcare workers to burnout. Like people are taking their lives. Yeah. Right. And that is, that is not okay. That's a big deal. Um, and, and people are quitting this like profession. Yeah. Initially people got into because they had this pure like joy for it. Right. 
-hmm. like me i had this like pure joy for it like this childhood like just awe yeah right like i remember like thinking about einstein you know and how he came up with like the theories of relativity and all these things yeah and it had to do with just how his mind worked right mm -hmm. he was a very like deep thinker and so i was always fascinated i was like man like what happens in your mind that like that you can do things like that you can like imagine sitting on a beam of light and he would do all these like internal mental experiments right yeah yeah just, like figure out this thing that has completely changed how we think about time and space yeah but that fascination with the human mind and the human body like that was a pure joy that i had but i lost it yeah so how many people out there like that who can do such good things in medicine or whatever the profession is but are just burnt out and and, and that light has just been ex extinguished yeah right how do we rekindle it and make it like burn right yeah. like instead of burning Ignite. out like burning burning brightly and igniting it yes so that's you know it's just it's a sad kind of situation and so that's why i'm really passionate about what i do because man it, telling you like i did not think one that i could ever burn out i had this ego right i was yeah. like oh, burnout is for the weak <laughs> that is not true right yeah. burnout can happen to anybody right um, especially if you think you're too good for it yeah you know and so when i burned out i'm telling you like i did not i didn't know how to get out of it like i was just like i i would hate for my like worst enemy to be in that deep state of just unhappiness. Yeah. It's not a good place to be. It's a very dark place to be. Right. Yeah. And if I can get out of that, anybody can get out of that. Right. You know, that's really the message. When you started to go through burnout, were there any symptoms like, because a lot of times when I speak to people that go through burnout, they don't realize in the beginning that's even happening. And then it just like hits them like a, like a crash. 100%. Hundred percent. Yeah, my symptoms were probably I didn't realize them as they were happening, right? But um, like just jaded. Yeah. Like if if you don't feel good about something that like, you know, objectively is one of the best things you could do as a human being, yeah. something is wrong. Mm -hmm. Right. Something is wrong. That yeah. is a very deep like incongruency. Like I am in medicine, I am helping people's lives. I am helping them live. I'm yeah. helping them see, and I'm just not feeling fulfilled by by this beautiful thing that I can have the privilege to do every single day. Yeah, right. That's yeah. like what someone someone made me realize that, and that's when it really hit me. Like, yeah, like there's something wrong. I'm right. deeply unhappy. Right. Um, so that was like that was my biggest symptom that took me a really long time to understand. The other thing was like, you know, um, like not being able to focus. Yeah. I would start something and not finish it, move on to something else, move on to something else, move on to something else. It's because like deep down inside, I was searching for that thing that's going to make me feel better because I chronically didn't feel good. Yeah. Right. So I was just chasing dopamine basically right you know? right when you get in this state of just chasing dopamine that's probably a good sign that like the way you're living your life currently what you're doing currently is is not working for you you're burnt yeah. out yeah you know what the phrases you want to use you're burnt out you're just you're exhausted you know it's just but burnout is a buzz phrase but it essentially comes down to feelings right yes feelings of disillusionment feelings of just chronic unfulfillment mm -hmm. um you know, that's, that's burnout. Yeah. Like if you had to like, um, think about everything we spoke about today, what are some important factors that you'd like the audience to understand? What would you like to emphasize on? Spend time understanding yourself, right? Spend time understanding yourself, whether it's some of the tools that we discussed here with IGBT or even like, just, you know, take five minutes, five minutes today and just yeah. sit down and reflect. Think mm -hmm. about the strongest emotion you felt that day and write about it. Right. That's enough to make sense. Just, you know, word vomit, right? Yeah. On the paper for five minutes. Um, it really helps 
to, you know, all I, I read, you know, I've been reading a lot about like meditation and mind, mindfulness and all these things. But if you really think about all of these different modalities, it comes down to basically just observing your thought. Yes. Observing your thoughts. That's it. Yeah, right. Exactly. You don't have to react on every thought that comes. Just sit there, have an out of body experience and just kind of think about you thinking about that thought. And then the thought will go and the thought may come with feelings. Mm -hmm. Right. And the feelings will go too. But just being able to sit still and sit with it is something very hard. And so, so that's kind of what I'm talking about. But instead of sitting with it, yes, sit with it, but also write it out. Because yeah. writing it out helps with the processing of it, right? Right. And then go one step further. Whatever you just wrote, put it in a chat GPT. Right. And ask it. Like, hey, help me dissect whatever I just said. Right. Right. Help me understand where this thought's coming from and provide insights on what this tells you about how I think about this particular situation or this particular emotion. That's the prompt. Yeah. And and then just kind of, you know, if you do that 10, 15 minutes a day, I promise you, like at the end of 30 days, you will unlock a lot of new insights about the way you are, the way you right. think, the way you handle your emotions. Once you know, then you can do something about it. Right. Right. Doing something about it is such a high bar. Like people kind of, you know, it's just too much. Like do something about what? Well, first, let's just understand you. Yeah. And if there is something we want to do something about, it, if there's something we want to change, we'll do it then. Right. But for now, it's just be an investigator into your own mind. Yeah, I get that. I like that. Now, what are some of the services that you provide? So one on one coaching is is really my focus right now. So and where can, I'll go ahead. And I was going to ask you, where can people find you? Uh, visionarydoc.com is is my website and my Instagram handle is visionary.docdoc. Um, those are, you know, all my social media is some version of visionary doc. So that's probably the best way to get a hold of me. I, you know, today has been amazing because I feel like a lot of people get caught up in, in everything around them or they get caught up on, I have to make money. I have to pay the bills. I have this, I have to do that. I have to do this. And they just, they just, they're losing sight of what's important, you know? And, you know, like we mentioned, you don't know what the next day may bring, you know, we don't know, you know, you're putting so much effort into, you know, worrying about this and worrying about that or becoming this and becoming that. And, you know, it's, it, there, there is always a solution to a problem, you know, and, and, and trying to, trying to live in complete chaos is, is not the way to go. And, you know, I love the fact that you were able to, you know, only work three days a week and you found other solutions. You branched yourself out into different areas where they were profitable things and profitable investments. And you were actually able to still do the, the one thing you love, but not have to overdo it so you could enjoy other things you know and enjoy your life and enjoy that free time and do whatever that free time lets you do that brings pleasure into your life you know because I, I think that's what people get so involved you know in what they have to do that they forget that you know being happy and and who they are are the are two of the most important things absolutely and, and you know I just want to say like there are parts to all of us, right? Mm -hmm. There's not just one part. There's yeah. not just one Stacy or one Chez or one whoever, right? I am an ophthalmologist. That is one part of me. There are many parts of me. Yes. And the other thing is that life is dynamic and it's it's a journey, right? And we transform. I am not the same person I was 10 years ago or five years ago. Yeah. And I'm probably going to be different five years or 10 years from now. Yes. I would right? In a positive direction, hopefully. Yes, 100%. <laughs> yeah. Right? But if I'm the exact same today compared to five years from now, I, I didn't I didn't do something right. Yeah. Probably. Right? Exactly. Um, because I, I fundamentally believe that the, the, the direction of life is to grow. Growth yes. is a life. Yes. Why am I saying that? Well, because I'm working three days a week now as an ophthalmologist. I may choose five years from now to do that five days a week. Right. Right. Or I may choose to do that one day a week. Right. I 
I don't know which direction or where that's going to go. But I do know that in order to decide that, I have to continue to be in touch with my feelings and what it is that I want for my life, right? Oh, what okay. is going to fulfill me? What is going to fulfill me? And that may change. It probably will change as long as you keep up with that change. Yeah. You got to know that's happening. Yes. And that's what I didn't do earlier in my life. I did as I was changing and becoming a different person, it's like it kind of just happened all of a sudden. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And so then you got to go do the work to figure out, well, okay, what happened? How did I get here? Right. But if we can continue to just reflect and be self-aware, then we can keep up with that change and that growth that's going to happen in our life. Right. Yes. Oh, beautifully but said. That's kind of what I want to say. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. No, that's beautifully said. You know, that, that that's exactly it. And and people have to realize that. I think they say every seven years we change. You know, like they, I think that's like the number they say. And and it's so true because if I look at myself seven years ago, I am completely different than I am today. And if I think about seven years prior, you know, I am completely different than that person. You know, it's like you're always, like you said, evolving, you're growing, you're thinking differently, you're looking at life differently. As we grow, as we grow, we tend to absorb and we tend to come to realizations that we didn't realize before. It's the wisdom, the life, the, the experiences we have, everything plays an effect. And it's so true. And we we do need to be aware of these things and we do need to understand, you know, what's going on and why we're changing this way. And, you know, and then and create a life that's going to make us bring happiness to our lives, you know, and that, you know, money, you know, if you do things the right way, money will make its way into your life, you know, but not right. to not to consistently focus on make, make that the main focus yeah. of your life. Absolutely. But well said. <laughs> well, Dr. Shaz, this has been amazing. I loved having you on. I hope you'll come back. And you've really gave some amazing insight. And, you know, I, I thank you so much for coming on the show. This has been amazing. Thank you for having me. It's always fun to talk to like-minded people, right? Yes. It's like when mm -hmm. you can connect with somebody who gets it. Yeah. Um, that relatability makes for a really good conversation. So thank you so much. This was super fun for me. Oh, it's, it's been a wonderful experience for me too. I've had a lot of fun also. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. And I look forward to speaking with you again. Sounds good. I'll see you next time. Okay. Bye-bye.